Hi, welcome back to the Scale Builders Workshop. This month we're going to take a look at cutting our own foam wing cores with a homemade hotware setup. Now there's nothing like a built up wing structure, but if you're going to end up with a fully sheeted wing, a foam core does make a lot of sense. Now a foam core wing is not necessarily easier or quicker to build than a built up structure because we're going to spend a lot of time creating templates and setting up the equipment. But a foam core wing does offer advantages such as a more accurate airfoil and can be built relatively strong and relatively light. You can also add in features like built-in washout. And all of this starts with an accurately cut foam core. While there are several commercial foam cutters on the market, you don't have to shell out a lot of cash to get good results. As I explained in the photos that accompany this video, I built my own hot wire uh, foam cutter for about $30 and it's given me years of service. Being into electrics has also helped because I can use one of my chargers as the power supply. The first step to cutting the foam core is to make some templates to guide the hot wire through the foam. You need something that will hold a smooth edge and withstand the heat of the hot wire. The best material I've found to date is kitchen countertop laminate. A few years ago a friend gave me the scraps from a, a kitchen countertop that he was replacing and I haven't run out yet. There are many ways to generate airfoil templates. I use CompuFoil to print these out, and there are many other free programs available on the web. I just roughly trim them to shape, and then I'll use some spray adhesive to fix them to my laminate. Now remember that you'll need two templates for each end of the wing, one to cut the top surface of the wing and one to cut the bottom. Here it will help to have some power tools. I'll use my bandsaw to cut the templates to shape and my disc sander to clean them up. For the final polishing of the cutting surface, you want to sand along the direction that the hot wire will travel. I like to use my drill press with a sanding drum for this. Any scratches along the edge of the template can snag the wire and cause burnout. Burnout is where the hot wire sits at one spot too long and basically melts a hole throughout the foam. This results in an uneven surface for your foam core. The final preparation for the templates is to clamp the top and bottom uh, templates together and drill holes for the alignment pins. These alignment pins will hold the templates to the foam blank during cutting, so you want them to be a tight fit. For the alignment pins, I've just used some finishing nails where I've cleaned up the tips. You can also use pop rivets. Now that we have our templates, we need to prepare our foam blanks. I'm using white expanded bead polystyrene. I found this at a local hardware store and it came in 2 foot by 8 foot sheets and is 2 inches thick. This is more than adequate for most model airplane wings. Using the plans, I've laid out the plan form of our wing and marked it with permanent marker. The edges of the foam tend to get dented and chewed up a bit, so it's a good idea to have your wing laid out so that there's fresh edges all the way around. I've made up these jigs here to help me out with this. They're just some one bys um, held on the table with some old battery packs. And there's a small peg slightly below the table level to catch the hot wire as it passes through the foam. I'll simply line up my hot wire on, on my marks and slide the foam up against my jigs. I have the leads hooked up to the hot wire and to my Astroflight 112D charger and it's all set to go. I simply start up the charger in test mode and dial in about 1.4 amps and let gravity do the rest. As the hot wire cuts through the foam you want to support the, the piece being cut off and pull it away from the wire as the, as the wire emerges from the foam. Now you can get by without these jigs, but you got to make sure that the leads hanging down from the hot wire are straight because they can cause the bow to twist as it falls through the foam. Also, you got to catch the hot wire as it comes through the foam, so these jigs are not a bad idea. There's the last cut, and I'm left with a nice square blank. Now if you're cutting with blue or pink extruded foam, there's a lot of stress when that foam is manufactured, so you may want to trim off a quarter of an inch off the top and bottom of your blank. 
If you don't do this, as you cut the wing airfoil, uh, the foam can start to twist and warp on you. Here's my homemade foam cutter. I've screwed the pulley system and swing arm assembly to the edge of my table. You'll need a large area for this, and if you end up using the kitchen table, I'd re recommend using some clamps instead. The cutting bow has a nose wheel assembly to allow the bow to pivot and tilt as it cuts. This is especially important when cutting a tapered wing. The power leads are connected to the hot wire with alligator clips, run around the pulleys to the swing bar, and then are attached to the swing bar with a pair of clamps. Now you could, could cut a wing by hand, but unless you have a really steady hand, it's easy to end up with a really uneven cut. Also, for a tapered wing, you can't beat this system, as I'll show you here. Since this wing is a, a bit shorter than my bow, I'll need to prop it up a bit so the ends of the cutting wire don't drag along the table and mess up the bottom of the airfoil. I'm just going to use a couple of pieces of foam here, square up my blank on top of it, and weigh it down with a battery pack. Next, I'll pin the bottom template to each side of the blank, with the leading edge pointing away from me. You always want to cut the bottom of the airfoil first, since the wire will melt some of the foam away, reducing the thickness of the wing. But it will settle to the bottom of the blank. This is called the curve of the wire, or how thick it cuts. If you cut the top of the airfoil first, you'll end up with a wing that's much thinner than you planned. Now I'll position the hot wire on the lead-in ramps of each template and secure the wires to the swing arm. Now if this were a straight wing, we would clamp both wires to the same spot on the swing bar. You just want to make sure that the tension in each wire is about the same and start your cut. Since we're cutting a tapered wing, the wire connected to the root end of the uh, hot wire will be clamped near the free end of the swing bar. Since the hot wire cutting the, at the tip of the wing core has to travel less distance, we will clamp that farther up the swing bar closer to the pivot point. Now I've taken a guess for now, and let's see how close I am. I'll lift the hot wire up over the foam blank and see how the travel looks. If you want to put your high school trigonometry to work, you can calculate the exact positions on the swing bar, and we'll leave that as an exercise for the student. What you're looking for is for both ends of the hot wire to exit the foam at the same time. A little patience here goes a long way to producing a, a good wing. Okay, everything is set up. I'll turn on the power and stand back. It's a little like watching paint dry at this point. But you'll see here also the importance of the, the wheel assembly on the bow that it can pivot and rotate around as the wire cuts. Now the weight of the clamps and the swing bar are enough to uh, pull the hot wire through and just, as it emerges from the foam, I'll just cut the power and, and hold on to the outside edge of the bow. Now you have to resist temptation to peek at your first cut. Without moving the blank, carefully remove the bottom template and put the top template in place. Now I'll re reposition the cutting wire back at the beginning of the templates. Line up my tail wheel assembly. Okay, and turn on the power. After this cut, we'll see how well I did. Okay, power off. Remove my weight. Remove the templates. And there we have it. A perfect wing coil ready for sheeting. Now before you do anything with your setup, make sure to mark the locations of the wires on the swing bar. You're going to need to swap the wires to cut the other side of the wing, and these marks will give you a good starting point for setting it up. Well that should about do it for this month. I hope you see that it's not hard to get good results with a minimal investment. We'll see you next time in the Scale Builders Workshop.